Learn English with the Bible. Exodus 9 The Disease on the Farm Animals Then the Lord told Moses, Go to the king of Egypt. Tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go to worship me. You might refuse to let them go and continue to hold them. Then the Lord will punish you. He will send a terrible disease on all your farm animals. He will cause all of your horses, donkeys, camels, cattle and sheep to become sick. But the Lord will treat Israel's animals differently from the animals of Egypt. None of the animals that belong to the Israelites will die. The Lord has set tomorrow as the time he will do this in the land. The next day the Lord did as he promised. All the farm animals in Egypt died. But none of the animals belonging to Israelites died. The king sent people to see what had happened to the animals of Israel. They found that not one of them had died. But the king was still stubborn. He did not let the people go. The Boils The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Fill your hands with the ashes from a furnace. Moses, throw the ashes into the air in front of the king of Egypt. The ashes will spread like dust through all the land of Egypt. The dust will cause boils to break out and become sores on the skin. These sores will be on people and animals everywhere in the land. So Moses and Aaron took ashes from a furnace. Then they went and stood before the king. Moses threw ashes into the air. It caused boils to break out and become sores on people and animals. The magicians could not stand before Moses. This was because all the Egyptians had boils, even the magicians. But the Lord made the king stubborn. So he refused to listen to Moses and Aaron. This happened just as the Lord had said. The Hail Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and go to the king of Egypt. Tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go to worship me. If you do not do this, this time I will punish you with all my power. I will punish you, your officers and your people. Then you will know that there is no one in the whole land like me. By now I could have used my power and caused a bad disease. It would have destroyed you and your people from the earth. But I have let you live for this reason, to show you my power. In this way my name will be talked about in all the earth. You are still against my people. You do not want to let them go. So at this time tomorrow, I will send a terrible hailstorm. It will be the worst in Egypt since it became a nation. Now send for your animals and whatever you have in the fields. 
Bring them into a safe place. The hail will fall on every person or animal that is still in the fields. If they have not been brought in, they will die. Some of the king's officers respected the word of the Lord. They hurried to bring their slaves and animals inside. But others ignored the Lord's message. They left their slaves and animals in the fields. The Lord told Moses, raise your hand toward the sky. Then the hail will start falling over all the land of Egypt. It will fall on people, animals and on everything that grows in the fields of Egypt. So Moses raised his walking stick toward the sky. And the Lord sent thunder and hail. And lightning flashed down to the earth. So he caused hail to fall upon the land of Egypt. There was hail, and there was lightning flashing as it hailed. This was the worst hailstorm in Egypt since it had become a nation. The hail destroyed everything that was in the fields in all the land of Egypt. The hail destroyed both people and animals. It also destroyed everything that grew in the fields. It broke all the trees in the fields. The only place it did not hail was in the land of Goshen. The people of Israel lived there. The king sent for Moses and Aaron. He told them, This time I have sinned. The Lord is in the right. And I and my people are in the wrong. Pray to the Lord. We have had enough of God's thunder and hail. I will let you go. You do not have to stay here any longer. Moses told the king, When I leave the city, I will raise my hands to the Lord in prayer. And the thunder and hail will stop. Then you will know that the earth belongs to the Lord. But I know that you and your officers do not yet fear the Lord God. The flax was in bloom, and the barley had ripened. So these crops were destroyed. But both wheat crops ripen later. So they were not destroyed. Moses left the king and went outside the city. He raised his hands to the Lord. And the thunder and hail stopped. The rain also stopped falling to the ground. The king saw that the rain, hail and thunder had stopped. Then he sinned again. He and his officers became stubborn again. The king became stubborn and refused to let the Israelites go. This happened just as the Lord had said through Moses. Exodus 10 The Locusts The Lord said to Moses, Go to the king of Egypt. I have made him and his officers stubborn. I did this so I could show them my powerful miracles. I also did this so you could tell your children and your grandchildren. Tell them how I made fools of the Egyptians. Tell them about the miracles I did among them. Then all of you will know that I am the Lord. 
So Moses and Aaron went to the king. They told him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. How long will you refuse to be sorry for what you have done? Let my people go to worship me. If you refuse to let my people go, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your country. They will cover the land, and no one will be able to see the ground. They will eat anything that was left from the hailstorm. They will eat the leaves from every tree growing in the field. They will fill your palaces and all your officers' houses. They will fill the houses of all the Egyptian people. There will be more locusts than your fathers or ancestors have ever seen. There will be more locusts than there have been since people began living in Egypt. Then Moses turned and walked away from the king. The king's officers asked him, How long will this man make trouble for us? Let the Israelite men go to worship the Lord their God. Don't you know that Egypt is ruined? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to the king. He said to them, Go and worship the Lord your God. But tell me, just who is going? Moses answered, We will go with our young and our old people, our sons and daughters, and sheep and cattle. This is because we are going to have a feast to honor the Lord. The king said to them, The Lord really will have to be with you if ever I let you and all of your children leave Egypt. See, you are planning something evil. No. Only the men may go and worship the Lord. That is what you have been asking for. Then the king forced Moses and Aaron out of his palace. The Lord told Moses, Raise your hand over the land of Egypt, and the locusts will come. They will spread all over the land of Egypt. They will eat all the plants that the hail did not destroy. So Moses raised his walking stick over the land of Egypt. And the Lord caused a strong wind to blow from the east. It blew across the land all that day and night. When morning came, the east wind had brought the locusts. Swarms of locusts covered all the land of Egypt and settled everywhere. There were more locusts than ever before or after. The locusts covered the whole land so that it was black. They ate everything that was left after the hail. They ate every plant in the field and all the fruit on the trees. Nothing green was left on any tree or plant anywhere in Egypt. The king quickly called for Moses and Aaron. He said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now forgive my sin this time. Pray to the Lord your God. Ask him to stop this punishment that kills. Moses left the king and prayed to the Lord. So the Lord changed the wind. He made a very strong wind to blow from the west. It blew the locusts away into the Red Sea. Not one locust was left anywhere in Egypt. But the Lord caused the king to be stubborn again. And he did not let the people of Israel go. The Darkness 
Then the Lord told Moses, Raise your hand toward the sky, and darkness will cover the land of Egypt. It will be so dark you will be able to feel it. So Moses raised his hand toward the sky. Then total darkness was everywhere in Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else. And no one could go anywhere for three days. But the Israelites had light where they lived. Again the king of Egypt called for Moses. He said, All of you may go and worship the Lord. You may take your women and children with you. But you must leave your sheep and cattle here. Moses said, you must let us have animals to use as sacrifices and burnt offerings. We have to offer them to the Lord our God. So we must take our animals with us. Not a hoof will be left behind. We have to use some of the animals to worship the Lord our God. We do not yet know exactly what we will need to worship the Lord. We will know when we get there. But the Lord made the king stubborn again. So he refused to let them go. Then he told Moses, Get out of here. Don't come here again. The next time you see me, you will die. Then Moses told the king, I'll do what you say. I will not come to see you again. Exodus 11 The Death of the Firstborn Now the Lord had told Moses, I have one more way to punish the king and the people of Egypt. After this, the king will send all of you away from Egypt. When he does, he will force you to leave completely. Tell the men and women of Israel to ask their neighbors for things made of silver and gold. The Lord had caused the Egyptians to respect the Israelites. The king's officers and the Egyptian people already considered Moses to be a great man. So Moses said to the king, This is what the Lord says, About midnight tonight, I will go through all Egypt. Every firstborn son in the land of Egypt will die. The firstborn son of the king, who sits on his throne, will die. Even the firstborn of the slave girl grinding grain will die. Also the firstborn farm animals will die. There will be loud crying everywhere in Egypt. It will be worse than any time before or after this. But not even a dog will bark at the Israelites or their animals. Then you will know that the Lord treats Israel differently from Egypt. Then all your officers will come to me. They will bow face down to the ground before me. They will say, leave and take all your people with you. After that, I will leave. Then Moses very angrily left the king. The Lord had told Moses, The king will not listen to you and Aaron. This is so that I may do many miracles in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron did all these great miracles in front of the king. But the Lord made him stubborn. And the king would not let the people of Israel leave his country. Exodus 12 Passover The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. 
This month will be the first month of the year for you. Both of you are to tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth day of this month each man must get one lamb. It is for the people in his house. There may not be enough people in his house to eat a whole lamb. Then he must share it with his closest neighbor. There must be enough lamb for everyone to eat. The lamb must be a one-year-old male. It must have nothing wrong with it. This animal can be either a young sheep or a young goat. Keep the animal with you to take care of it until the 14th day of the month. On that day all the people of the community of Israel will kill these animals. They will do this as soon as the sun goes down. The people must take some of the blood. They must put it on the sides and tops of the door frames. These are the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. On this night they must roast the lamb over a fire. Then they must eat it with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the lamb raw or boiled in water. Roast the whole lamb over a fire with its head, legs and inner organs. You must not leave any of it until morning. But if any of it is left over until morning, you must burn it with fire. This is the way you must eat it. You must be fully dressed as if you were going on a trip. You must have your sandals on, and you must have your walking stick in your hand. You must eat it in a hurry. This is the Lord's Passover. That night I will go through the land of Egypt. I will kill all the firstborn of animals and people in the land of Egypt. I will punish all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. But the blood will be a sign on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Nothing terrible will hurt you when I punish the land of Egypt. You are always to remember this day. Celebrate it with a feast to the Lord. Your descendants are to honor the Lord with this feast from now on. For this feast you must eat bread made without yeast for seven days. On the first day of this feast, you are to remove all the yeast from your houses. No one should eat any yeast for the full seven days of the feast. If anyone eats yeast, then that person will be separated from Israel. You are to have holy meetings on the first and last days of the feast. You must not do any work on these days. The only work you may do on these days is to prepare your meals. You must celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Do this because on this very day I brought your divisions of people out of Egypt. So all of your descendants must celebrate this day. This is a law that will last from now on. You are to eat bread made without yeast. Start this on the evening of the fourteenth day of the first month of your year. Eat this until the evening of the twenty-first day. For seven days there must not be any yeast in your houses. Anybody who eats yeast during this time must be separated from the community of Israel. This includes Israelites and non-Israelites. During this feast you must not eat yeast. You must eat bread made without yeast wherever you live. 
Then Moses called all the elders of Israel together. He told them, Get the animals for your families. Kill the animals for the Passover. Take a branch of the hyssop plant and dip it into the bowl filled with blood. Wipe the blood on the sides and tops of the door frames. No one may leave his house until morning. The Lord will go through Egypt to kill the Egyptians. He will see the blood on the sides and tops of the door frames. Then the Lord will pass over that house. He will not let the one who brings death come into your houses and kill you. You must keep this command. This law is for you and your descendants from now on. Do this when you go to the land the Lord has promised to give to you. When your children ask you, why are we doing these things? You will say, this is the Passover sacrifice to honor the Lord. When we were in Egypt, the Lord passed over the houses of Israel. The Lord killed the Egyptians, but he saved our homes. So now the people bowed down and worshipped the Lord. They did just as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight the Lord killed all the firstborn sons in the land of Egypt. The firstborn of the king, who sat on the throne, died. Even the firstborn of the prisoner in jail died. Also all the firstborn farm animals died. The king, his officers and all the Egyptians got up during the night. Someone had died in every house. So there was loud crying everywhere in Egypt. Israel leaves Egypt. During the night the king called for Moses and Aaron. He said to them, Get up and leave my people. You and your people may do as you have asked. Go and worship the Lord. Take all of your sheep and cattle as you have asked. Go. And also bless me. The Egyptians also asked the Israelites to hurry and leave. They said, If you don't leave, we will all die. The people of Israel took their dough before the yeast was added. They wrapped the bowls for making dough and clothing and carried them on their shoulders. The people of Israel did what Moses told them to do. They asked their Egyptian neighbors for things made of silver and gold and for clothing. The Lord caused the Egyptians to think well of the Israelites. So the Israelites took rich gifts from the Egyptians. The Israelites traveled from Ramesses to Sukkot. There were about 600,000 men walking. This does not include the women and children. Many other people who were not Israelites went with them. A large number of sheep, goats and cattle went with them. The Israelites used the dough they had brought out of Egypt. They baked loaves of bread without yeast. The dough had no yeast in it because they had been rushed out of Egypt. So they had no time to get food ready for their trip. The people of Israel had lived in Egypt for 430 years. On the day the 430 years ended, the Lord's divisions of people left Egypt. 
That night the Lord kept watch to bring them out of Egypt. So on this same night the Israelites are to keep watch. They are to do this to honor the Lord from now on. The Lord told Moses and Aaron, Here are the rules for Passover. No foreigner is to eat the Passover. Suppose a person buys a slave and circumcises him. Then the slave may eat the Passover. But no one who lives for a short time in your country may eat it. No hired worker may eat it. The meal must be eaten inside the house. None of the meat is to be taken outside the house. Don't break any of the bones. The whole community of Israel must take part in this feast. A foreigner who lives with you may share in the Lord's Passover. But first all the males in his house must be circumcised. Then, since he will be like a citizen of Israel, he may share in the meal. But a man who is not circumcised may not eat the Passover meal. The same rules apply to an Israelite born in the country. And they apply to a foreigner living there. So all the Israelites did just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. 51 Then on that same day, the Lord led the Israelites out of Egypt. The people left by divisions.